Hello, what's up guys? It's Will back once again for another Fight Club prediction. We're here for UFC 254. Nurmagomedov against Gaethje for the UFC lightweight championship in an unbelievably good fight um, that I think everyone's looking forward to. It's an earlier start time here in the UK for uh, UFC 254. It'll be the same with you guys in America, so have a look at your listings and make sure you're, you're not missing out in this unbelievably good fight. Um... Yeah, just a couple of things before we get started. Uh, I put in the community section on my page earlier on, I've got a couple of goals for this card. Uh, if you could help me out with this and try and see if I can do a couple of things here. So, since it's UFC 254, I'm trying to aim for 254 likes on this video. Last week I got 198, can we get to 254? Let's see, I think it's a bit of a stretch, but I think if you guys can help me out with that, we can maybe get close. I'm on the mission to hit 4,000 subs. I'm 100 away, so I'm trying to aim for 25 subs for this week if possible. And, uh, yeah, just try and see if we can we can hit those numbers. 25 subs, 254 likes, why not? Um, let's try and do that. So, yeah, coming off uh, a good card, I scraped a profit betting-wise couple of good bets, a couple of bad bets, a um, couple of spots where I wish I could have went on guys a little bit higher and a little bit overconfident in some guys, but that's just betting for you all together. The predictions, some were good and some were bad. So, uh, yeah, well, there's some great fights in this card I'm looking forward to. Obviously, you've got the main event of the night, which is unbelievable as, as a fight, and Justin Gaethje has really elevated himself up into that upper echelon after that performance against Tony Ferguson. So, Looking forward to that. Great co-main event as well. And uh, we've got some fighters in there throughout the card, which I'm looking kind of forward to as well. So we're going to get started with that. Just a shout out to Daily Fan MMA, which is Brett Apley's new um, conception. He's, he said he's left Roto Grinders and he's doing his own website. Great stuff for DraftKings, guys. I'll go over there and just look at his write-up projections. There's a betting hub. There's all types of things. And I just want to shout out all the fellow predictors out there who are making stuff week in, week out for you guys to, to view as well. And shout out to MMA Lock of the Night for his 100th episode of the Lockcast. So uh, let's get into this card. Lightweight division, Joel Alvarez against Alexander Yakovlev. Started watching some fights in this today because I was like, I'm not really too... It's a fight I don't really want to bet on. It, it was just one that's like, I'm not betting on that whatsoever. Um... But the line opened really high where like Yakovlev was like, I want to say it was like plus 220, plus 230. I was like, damn, if you could have got that. Um, Alvarez was like a massive, massive favourite. So I watched a couple of fights. I'm not super impressed with Alvarez. I think he, he got um, Bill Oardo, who I don't think was UFC calibre. Joe Duffy, who obviously had retirement in his mind. But he did the job and he got the guys out of there. So that's something you have to be um, happy if, you, if you're him, if you're backing him as well. Um, lost to Demir Esmagulov in his UFC debut. Guy's very dangerous with his submissions. Most of his wins are through the submission uh, submissions. But he's got that TQ finish over Billy Oardo. So, yeah, he, he can kind of do a little bit of everything. I just don't think he's great at anything. I think his, obviously, submission grappling, when you look at his record, is what really stands out. Both guys are 6'3 for the lightweight division. That's massive. You've got a lot of experience on the side of Yakovlev. He's been in the UFC a little bit longer. Um... A little bit more grizzled, but he is 36 years old, coming off a loss to Roosevelt Roberts, which I didn't really, it's not something I really, really like when he's losing like to kind of young prospect like that. But um, this one here, I'm going to, I'm not confident in it, so for me it's kind of dog or pass. So I'm going to take Yakovlev via decision. I saw the decision prop was plus 400 here in the UK. I think that's a viable bet if you, if you want to put a little bit of change on this fight. Um, Alvarez I think could be very dangerous early with his chokes, you've seen that, he caught that beautiful guillotine choke, he was also hitting Duffy with some low kicks, so he's maybe starting to round himself out as a fighter for me I'm going to go Alexander Yakovlev um, for the decision there Women's flyweight division, Liana Jujua against Miranda Maverick this is one of these things, and I was speaking with someone earlier on regarding this, like watching a full career fighter now Maverick's had like nine fights and I've watched all of her fights and if I was to go back to the 2017 2016 2017 Miranda Maverick I think Joe Dua could probably have an opportunity to beat her back then the 2019 2020 Miranda Maverick I just don't see it 
I think she's started to round her game out. She's super strong. Her striking's come along. Her positional grappling's came along. And when you look at Jojua, she's really sub or bust, arm bar or bust. And she, that kind of happened last time against Belbita. But Belbita kind of really played into that by taking her down. Really, really, really bad fight IQ. Not great fight IQ. And ended up getting subbed in the first round there. So uh, Maverick, far stronger, better striker. Uh, even Jojua's regional fights, you go back there, she she loses positions very easily against, I think, less stronger people than what Maverick is. There was a story regarding Maverick with a knee injury, which they were saying was career kind of, um, a possible career ender, which is a little bit kind of not news you really want to hear, but she's like a massive under, a massive favourite in this one. I don't want to bet that spot. If she was in the mid 200s, I'd probably put her in a parlay somewhere. Mid 300s, she's probably safe. Uh, outside of the kind of armbar situation, but I've got Maverick in, in this spot. Like I say, her early career, you've seen her get into positions where she'd get a back taken, she'd be in side control. Diana Bennett got in side control, um, but she's really moved past that. She's moved kind of past the green stage and moved into prospect stage by doing well in the Invicta shows. I like her to win this one here. She could get Jojo out of there, but I've got her for the win regardless. Uh, a catch weight bout, a short notice fight that's been put together on a couple of weeks' notice. Nathaniel Wood against Casey Kenny. Love this fight. Absolutely love this fight. Big fan of Nathaniel Wood. Big fan of Casey Kenny. Casey Kenny fought a couple of weeks ago. Um, and just a little side note with this one. I mean, he got his black belt. But it's like, he was in Abu Dhabi. Got home for, I think it's 9 or 10 days. And then he's back to Abu Dhabi. That's a 16 hour flight. Now that's a lot of air time. And that's a lot of getting adjusted to time differences and such. So... That's a bit of a worry for me, if I'm being honest with you. Um, coming off an unbelievable performance against Haile Alateng, I had him parlayed with uh, Ulim Bekov, which kind of got a bit sweaty towards that there, but Casey Kenny looked unbelievable with his strike, and he blitzed Haile Alateng. And personally, I thought he was going to grapple in that fight, so that was a bit of a surprise to me. But he's showing that he's rounding himself out as a, a fighter, and he's a very dangerous fighter, is Casey Kenny, because he's well-faceted in many, many areas of the game. And... Um, it's always he's always been a kind of well-rounded kind of fighter, but he's really starting to put it all together. Like I say, he's got his black belt. Looking at this fight here, you you've got Wood obviously coming off that win over Castaneda. I kind of really had to rebound after that loss to John Dodson, and um, he did so very comfortable against Castaneda, where he kind of fought tough. Wood sh probably should have got him out of there, but he was just very very comfortable with that. Um, so I'm I'm looking at this here where Casey Kenny can win the fight. I think he's going to grapple more in this fight because I think that Wood is... When he was thrown at Alateng with the shots that he was thrown, I think if he does that against Nathaniel Wood, he will have more to come back than what Alateng was thrown. I think he's got more power. He's got more variance with his striking. Um, I think he, he can grapple as well. I think he's an underestimated grappler. He can get to the back very, very easily. Good submission grappler. Um... But Kenny is a really, really tough guy. I think the line's a bit off in this spot. I think it's a little bit high in, in Casey's side. I mean, the fight's been put together on a couple of weeks' notice, so um, I can see you guys in the chat there. I hope you're all well. Um, it's been put together on a couple of weeks' notice, so I'm a little bit kind of concerned of where they were at two weeks ago. I know Wood has been flying out to Italy to help teammates who have been um, fighting for Bellator and so on. Casey Kenny was obviously fighting two weeks ago, went back to Arizona, and then he's back out to Abu Dhabi again. So it's it's a weird fight for me, but I'm, I'm just wondering how Casey Kenny is going to come into this because I think Wood's got more natural power. Um, a little bit defensively, I think he gets hit a little bit too much, so Kenny might be able to land on him and then get some takedowns. But for me, I'm, I'm on the dog side here, Nathaniel Wood. I think this is a good, good hard fight. for. I think it's the kind of fight he will ch um, relish, kind of knowing Nathaniel Wood a little bit and meeting him, and, and he wants the tough fights, he wants the hard fights. Castaneda was just a fight to really get him back into the win cycle there. I say, I mean, I really like Casey Kenny, but I just think this is going to be a close, close encounter. And I think on the feet, Nathaniel Wood's going to pepper him with some shots once um, Kenny gets a little bit too aggressive, and I think Kenny's going to start to grapple. He could win with his grappling. Um, I mean, he could win with his grappling. I see this being close. I'd rather take the shot in the dog. Um... I feel like I want to take a shot bait in Nathaniel Wood at plus 160, in my opinion. This is the kind of spot I really like. I like that number being in amongst there. Um, 
but Kay, that, that's one I'm going to kind of keep an eye on through the week because Kay, I've got a lot of respect for Casey Kenny, so I can't go into that one really um, downtrodden his ace wins because, he, I mean, his only loss in the UFC was Mirab Devashvili, which is obviously um, I, I, not a bad loss. And I, I, he fought competitively, even though he was never really in the fight in that one. I'm going to take Nathaniel Wood. I'm going to take him via... Um, I'm going to take him via a very, very close decision there. Joe Drew is a bit of a different kind of Georgian fighter, I must say, to the person in the chat there, to your Kuta Talads and your Tapuria. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go, like I say, Nathaniel Wood's going to be my pick in that one there. Darton Jung against Sam Alvey is up next. And I can kind of see what the UFC are doing here. They're trying to maybe set up Darton Jung um, in this spot here. Sam Alvey really... He's kind of on his last legs, you would think, with the UFC here. Uh, was it four losses in a row? Fought very close against Ryan Spann last time out. Lost to Clinton Abreu. Got knocked out by Jimmy Crew. We've seen at the weekend. He's got some hellacious power. Uh, and it's really kind of a bit of a dark horse in that lightweight division, uh, light heavyweight division that we need, really need to keep an eye out because he, he's really put it all together. Big power, striking, grappling, takedowns. Uh, wrestling, whatever it may be, he's doing it all at the minute, so Crute's dangerous uh, and they're trying to set up Dalm Jung here where I mean, he can he, he fought Clinton Abragamov Abragamov is clearly not a UFC calibre fighter, we've seen that, he'll be gone uh, now, Mike Rodriguez is not a bad bad win, I suppose um, got him out of there very, very quickly as well but you've got the experience here of someone that's nearly fought 50 fights, so it's a big step up in kind of to a grizzled veteran, um, I'm, I'm. I've seen people confident in in Sam Alvey. Uh, I cannot pick him in this fight. I think even though the experience and the, he's like I say he's got kill power, but he just doesn't seem to th throw enough in my opinion. But as the fight goes on, he might kind of come into this fight a little bit more in in my opinion. So like I say, if you're looking for a live dog and you think that he's got a chance in it, what plus three hundred. You're gonna, you've got value on your side there. I don't want to have anything in Dalong Jung at what, minus 360, uh, whatever it may be. My pick's going to be Dalong Jung. I just think he's a little bit... I think he's going to be... It's hard to say he's a little bit better because we've still only seen a couple of fights in the UFC, but I think the UFC really want to try and build this guy. They, they need him for the division, kind of moving forward. So I'll take Dalong Jung. I'll take him I'll take him via stoppage. Why not? I'll take him maybe catching Sam Alvey because, I mean, he can be taken out as well. So I'll take Dalong Jung... For the win there via stoppage. This is going to be a really good fight. What everybody's talking about the, the main event. I think this fight has potential to be fireworks. Welterweight division. Alex Oliveira against Shavkat Rachmanov. Um I oh I mean I I I've, I like watching Rachmanov fights, I'll be honest with you. I think the guy's still a little green. He was then one champion. Um big guy for the division, tall lot of leverage, um, kind of plods forward, big strikes, will we'll kind of get aggressive, will we'll get over-aggressive at the points and jump in for guillotines even though the position's not really there. But um, solid striker, can attack the body, can can fight, um, can go up top and then move down to the body. Um, he, he can mix it up okay. I just don't think he stands out to me. And I, I mean, he's very exciting as a fighter, but... I'm just thinking, this is maybe a little bit too much for your UFC debut. They tried to match him up with a couple of guys off the top of my head. I cannot remember who they were trying to put him with, but they were, they're were giving him respect by giving him decent color, name caliber guys. Oliveira is coming in here in a couple of weeks' notice. I've been trying to fade Oliveira kind of going forward, uh, going in the past, sorry. Sabota tried to, to fade him there, and he fought a very competent game plan in that one and very kind of really stayed out of harm's way, picked his shots. I think that Rachmanov is going to bring the fight to him. So I think we're going to see a little bit more of the, the how boy of the past where he um, will engage in a brawl, will get a little bit wild. And I, I can see these two getting into some positions there where they're jumping on things for guillotines. Um, something Rachmanov's did before, he, he goes for guillotines and he's got a nasty one because of his leverage. I think that Oliveira can grapple this guy. I've seen Rachmanov taken down. I just see this one being a very much a back and forward brawl. If these two start going each other, this this could be a really fun fight. Um, but I edge Oliveira, and I was coming into this fight before I started watching fights. I thought Rachmanov at plus.
it's money. I like that. Um, I like that kind of number. I like where he was at, and it's been bet down, so the money is coming in on him, so that people will probably start to jump on Oliveira, and it might start to go back up a little bit. So, I know people that have bet Rachmanov. Um, I'm going to go Alex Oliveira, even though I've been trying to kind of fade him his last couple of fights, or at least his last fight um, against Sabota. Uh, but this has the potential to be fireworks. I'm just, like I say, I'm kind of questioning, this is one next week that I'll come back to in this where I'm kind of questioning myself that, because um, he is coming in short notice and you don't know what kind of, especially with him, he's wild. Ah, oh, right, here we go. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna go out Oliveira. The gut's telling me Oliveira. Whether I'm wrong or not, we'll, we'll wait and see. Ah, oh, I feel like I'm wrong on that one. Fuck. Uh, no, I'm going to go Oliveira. The gut's telling me I'm going to stick to that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with Oliveira, even though it doesn't really sit right with me, if I'm being honest with you. Heavyweight division, Stefan Struve against Tai Tuivasa. Um, pass. I was actually, if you went back to probably Sunday when I was watching this, I was like, right, I'm going to bet Tai Tuivasa. And then I, I started watching some of his previous, like the last couple of fights. I was like, oh, I can't do it. I just cannot do it. So I kind of threw that off the board. I'm not going to be betting this fight. Uh, it's hard to really trust either side here. You've obviously got the, the wild power of Tuivasa with the boxing, um, with the kind of... The, the length of Struve with the, the better ground game than Tuivasa, that's where I think he will need to get this fight to, if he can get it to the ground. I mean, Spivak was really kind of manhandling him a little bit and throwing him around. Struve's not going to do that. I think he's going to want to push him back and maybe try and work off the cage to get a takedown. I think that's where he kind of wins the fight. Like I said, this is a total pass fight for me, um, in my opinion. I, 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 like I said, I went into this thinking, right, I want to bet Tai Tuivasa, but I, I cannot do it. Struve, to me... He's retired. He came back. He's been around the UFC for a long, long time. Tuivasa was back at AKA way back in February before this whole thing kicked off. And I'm a little bit worried with the whole lockdown thing, whether he's actually been consistently in the gym. That's something that when I when I think, right, Tai Tuivasa, would he be in the gym all the time? I'm just like, I, I cannot really see it that way. I, I'll be honest with you. But um, to me, it's kind of dog or pass. Tai Tuivasa is the underdog in this one here. I think if he can keep this one standing, bang those leg kicks in, I think um, I think he can he can win this fight via TKO. So I'll take Tai Tuivasa. Not super confident in the pick though, if I'm being honest with you. See you some guys in the chat there chatting away. All the um, seeing all that there. That's pretty awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, if you missed the start of the video, I am. Uh, Trying to hit 200, uh, trying to get 254 likes. If you can give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome. I've never, I don't think I've ever got above 200 likes before. So, 254 for UFC 254 would be awesome. And I'm trying to get 25 subs. So if you're new, hit that sub button. I'm here week in, week out. Have been for years, and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So, yeah, main card time. Um, in fact, I missed a fight there, which I'll add on right now. Lauren Murphy against uh, Lilia Shakarova. I should have probably did this right at the start of the, the prelims here, but um, watch Shakarova today, 8-1 record. I was watching against 1-3 girls, and there was a fight against, I think it was Bo Meng, um, where, <laughs> I mean, I thought Bo Meng actually kind of won the fight, and then they gave it kind of majority decision to Shakarova, which I was a little bit, I was like, ooh, wasn't sure. Um, she's going to look to want to grapple here, I think, a our striking's not good. It's like just a typical one, two straight shots down the pipe. Nothing really on them. She's she's hurt and dropped a couple of goals that are not overly great from what I've seen, like one in three records and so on. But she's one of those girls that you're going to have to face them when you're out in the regionals. You're not going to get the best um, opposition out there. And she's jumping in here on short notice after Calvillo kind of pulled out last week there. To me, when I look at this fight, I was just looking at Lauren Murphy just a couple of hours ago. Um, I think her physicality is is what's going to win her this fight. I think she wants it more. I think she'll be more physical, more stronger than what Shakarova is. Shakarova might want to get the fight to the ground. I don't think she will get it to the ground. So for me, I'm going to pick Lauren Murphy. I just think her strength and her physicality and just probably being the best sport of her career right now is what will kind of really get her to come through this fight here so um, I'll take Lauren Murphy but like I say you don't really want to be betting um, 
Lauren Murphy, in my opinion. I've seen some people actually bait and chuck her over, which was a little bit surprised to me, but like I say, I, I don't I want any part of that. I just think she'll be too strong for Shakarova and she'll, she'll win here, but it is what it is. Middleweight division, Jacob Malkin against Phil Hawes. Um, Phil Hawes coming in, um, to the UFC. I think he's been a long time coming. Jacob Malkin coming into the UFC 4-0, which is a little bit uh, worrying. I know he's Robert Whitaker's boy, so when you've got a former UFC champion batting for you, it always kind of works itself out um, for it. Only got to watch two of his fights. It's all I could find on Jacob Malkin. There was a jiu-jitsu one on YouTube as well, which I watched. Um, not fighting the greatest caliber opposition, but you're always going to get that when you're out there. So, um, seen in that fight, I think it was the, the, the Vettel fight, I think, or Vemtail, I think it was Sebastian Vemtail. Um, started off well, got hit with a couple of shots, but then got really super aggressive, got some takedowns, got some nice big power shots on the ground, works really hard. Um, and can land some big, big heavy shots, really kind of stays in the guard and really doesn't move to a, a different position at all and just kind of rains heavy ground and pound from there. When you look at Phil Hawes, he's been a guy that's been talked up for a very long time, coming out of Jackson Winks many years ago. He's now at Sanford MMA, which is a Hard Knocks 365 from the, the back there. Um... If he's if he puts it all together here, he's got far too much, I think, for Jacob Malkin. The, the fights that I've seen Malkin... I mean, he's sprawled a couple of times in his fights, but I don't think he's faced anybody of the calibre of Phil Hawes with the power and the strength of athleticism and uh, just to get the fight to the ground there. So, for me, I'm kind of more erring on the, the Phil Hawes side. He, he kind of got through that barrier in the Dana White Contender Series against Bestiev, where he got him down there, um, hit him with a big shot, got him down and stopped him via TKO. 4-0 is a lot, especially against someone like Hodge, who's he's kind of went through his trials and tribulations, he's he's um, won some decent fights and then lost to guys, you're like, oh, so he's only lost, I think, or to UFC guys is Phil Hodge, so I'm going to edge on Phil Hodge's side here, he could be a parlay piece, which I've, I've marked down as a parlay piece, but I've, I've actually had some people message me about Malkoon, so I'm like, ah, oh. so I'm a little bit... Um, Love Bavada Polka. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. A little donation there. Uh, I appreciate that very much. Thank you very much. I see you guys talking in the chat there about dogs and Maverick and, and, and so on there. I love when I see stuff like that. Um, as long as we can keep it respectful, then I'm all for that. But I uh, appreciate that donation. It's much, much appreciated. It always helps out. So thank you very much. So I'm taking Phil Hawes for there, by the way. <laughs> oh, this fight. Magomed Ankalev against Ion Kutilaba. I don't really even want to break this fight down for the simple fact that who knows if it's going to even happen again. Both guys have tested positive for COVID-19. We obviously had the first match where <laughs> Ankalev won the fight. He, I think Kutalaba was kind of roped open a little bit there, playing a little bit, but if you play that against some referees, they might take it a different way. That's what happened there. And uh, Kutalaba lost the fight there. They're putting it all together. Um... I think it's just as a fighter, Ankalai was just better. Just a better... If he can get through the first couple of minutes in this one here, I think he will just boss someone like Kutalaba with, um, with 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 strikes. I think he can take the fight to the ground, even though you've got the Greco-Roman background of Ion Kutalaba. I, I don't think it's going to work against someone like Ankalai here. So I don't really want to spend too much time breaking this fight down. I've did it about four times, it feels like. Ankalai, I think, is the more polished striker, good grappler good submission artist, um, and really a, a little bit of a dark horse in that division, in my opinion. So, um, Magomed Ankalev is going to be my pick in that one. I think he gets Kutalab out towards the, the end of round two, into round three. Um, yeah, I, I've got Ankalev pretty comfortably in that one there. Um, Alexander Volkov against Walt Harris here. I think this line is an opportunity to... I mean, maybe make some dosh, some dollar on Alexander Volkov, in my opinion. Um, minus 155 to me, it seems a little bit of a, it seems a really good line, but I don't know whether it's a little bit of a trap line, because I, I'm thinking he should be up towards minus 200, in my opinion. I don't understand why he's so low. And I've been kind of trying to think of that Sunday, today, Monday, it's nearly 11pm here in the UK. And I've been looking at a watch, I'm thinking he should best, 
I mean, he should best Walt Harris here. In my opinion, Walt Harris is he's a, a fucking first round fighter where I think if he doesn't get you out, he can gas badly. He did that against Overeem. Had his opportunity where he kind of caught Overeem early, but then kind of gassed out. And Volkov is very tough. I mean, he can fight disciplined. He can fight long. Um, he obviously, he, he can be caught. You've seen the Derek Lewis there where he can caught with big power shots. Um, this, to me, is just a line I feel that I have to jump on and put a fairly decent bet on Volkov. But I'm trying to be really cautious and see where the line's going. Because I'm thinking he should be like minus 200 in this spot. I mean, he faced Curtis Blades last time. I got completely kind of beat up for three minutes, uh, three rounds of that fight, maybe four rounds. But he kept himself competitive. When it was on the feet, he tried to strike and he just couldn't stop the takedown. But was just he never gave up in that. And I loved that spot. Um, and he's fought the far better caliber opposition. Well, oh, no, I was going to say far better caliber opposition. But we think Waris, uh, Harris has fought for Doom and Overeem. So maybe, maybe that's a little bit out there. But he's he, even like... He fought Minev out there, um, Vladimir Minev out there, and Bellator, and so I've, um, and I mean Volkov's faced some some tough guys as well. Long, long with kickboxer doesn't want to get in power exchanges, obviously with Walt Harris. Um, minus two hundred to minus two twenty five. Kevin's saying there, I I think that's the range it should be, and I'm seeing around about minus two hundred. Um, yeah, so I've got Alexander Volkov. I just think he's the more competent striker. You've seen that. He can he can really keep a discipline, disciplined game plan. He did it against Greg Hardy, where he fought long, fought the younger kind of guy there and, and really kept him at bay. Um, I can't go Walt. Nine minutes is saying there. I, I agree with you there. Like, I feel I should unload on this line. And now that I'm off tie to Ivasa, I think um, this go the Cardinals, Don. Cardinals should win. <laughs> I feel like I should go re very heavy in Volkov. So... Um, that's kind of where I'm going with, with that one. I think I'm going to bet Alexander Volkov. We'll wait and see where the line goes. I think the line should be higher. And he is one of my more confident picks in the whole entire card there, as long as he doesn't get caught with a big shot early on. Um, looking on Wikipedia here, it's saying Hamza Shemaev against Neil Magny. So somebody's been playing hijinks there. We're moving into the co main event. Um, Robert Whitaker against Jari Kananir. Great fight, one I've looked into a lot and trying to get um, trying to, to, to get a read on this and I, I'm on Robert Whitaker in this spot. Um, I think three rounds, I think so, uh, this is the first three round fight he's had in a long time. He kind of got the blues out the road after facing Darren Till there, especially coming in. Got dropped in the first round, beautiful elbow by um, Till. And then rebounding the second round where he caught him with a beautiful shot there, put Till down, and then really kind of bossed the fight in the mid part of that. Um, and then uh, Till kind of came back into it a little bit in the fourth, but then the championship kind of caliber came through in the fifth there. Jari Kananias looked like an absolute killer since he came to 185, ran through um, David Branch after a little bit of a tough start where Branch was just like, he didn't know what to strike with Kananias, wanted to get the fight to the ground, did so on two or three occasions. But you showed that he's he's been making strides in that grappling there where he got back to his feet. And he showed that um, in the fight with Jack Manson where Jack came out, really didn't want to strike with this guy all too much. And came out there, took the fight to the ground, got back up quick. And once Jack realised that he couldn't really keep him there or at least, at least like get him in a spot where he could get him down and keep him there after getting his back, then he was in a lot of trouble. And then he had a beautiful like saw an upper, uppercut right through the middle of the guard and, and knocked him out there obviously it was Anderson Silva fight where he, he took him out with leg kicks there big heavy leg kicks that's something I think he has to use here because you've got the kind of bouncy style of Robert Whitaker if you can stop that then uh, and you can maybe put Whitaker in a bad spot with those legs where he's not bouncing around he's then a more hittable target in my opinion I am a little bit worried about the way Whitaker jumps into shots he comes very uh, he comes very wild with those shots and a good counter striker will catch him, i.e. Israel Adesanya, who is just the man in that division. So um, when you look at it, you could have Robert Whitaker who could possibly wrestle, even though it's not something he's done a hell of a lot. But um, to me, I just feel like Robert Whitaker, I'm on the side of Robert Whitaker here. I like that, but Kanani is very dangerous and he has weapons there where he can absolutely put him down and hurt him there because Whitaker sometimes does get a little bit too aggressive, but I think getting the till fight at the road was massive for him. 
big fight here and then he maybe fights another opponent and maybe gets an opportunity at Adesanya again possibly it's obvious who Israel's wanting this one he wants Jared Cannonier. so if I'm Jared I come out here and I try and establish that low kick game try and not get hit with big shots I mean he's knocked out guys at heavyweight light heavyweight so he's got that power regardless and it's going to stick around with him there um, and like I say, I like the improved takedown defense from Jared Cannonier, but I, I think this is going to come a more more of a striking fight. And I think that Robert Whitaker, due to the stats and you watch his fights, he throws more, he lands more. I think that this fight will be close, but I think Whitaker wins a decision. I think he lands more. I think he frustrates um, Cannonier a little bit. And uh, I think that he wins a decision there. Yeah, and I'm going to bet him probably at plus 100 before that line. I know it's went to, I think it's minus 105 in America. So I want that plus money beside his name there if I want him in that one there. So Robert Whitaker for me via decision in that one. And the main event of the night. 28-0 and 0 against, I think it's 22-2. and 2. Um, You've got Habib Namagomedov, the... UFC lightweight champion, undisputed lightweight champion against the interim champion, Justin Gaethje, who is coming off one of the greatest, I think one of the better performances we've had in a very long time against Tony Ferguson. He, after the first kind of couple of rounds, even though he got dropped there, he he really, in the third round, and I applaud you guys to go and watch the fight again, but watch it from the corners and watch Trevor Whitman. His coaching in that fight was unbelievable he's saying to Justin Gaethje look take like 10 20 percent off your shots just land in this guy you've got enough power where you can hurt him pick your shots did it and he started landing a plum and then he really started to put more um strikes more, just more power into strikes the more that Tony Ferguson was kind of um fading a little bit was more hittable so smart smart coaching you've seen more um Whitman throughout that fight he's a great coach very underestimated coach in my opinion and you've got someone like Gaethje who's a sponge we all know how this fight kind of goes and what's going to happen we know what Khabib's game plan is you've seen that he's going to come out and he's going to look to push Gaethje against the cage and try and because that's where predominantly his fights go is against the cage where he can get takedowns from there He's not one to really get takedowns in the open space. He likes to pressure you, cut off angles, cut the fighter off, put you against the cage and take you down. And I think he can do that. And we've seen, I mean, Michael Johnson jumped in very quickly and Justin Gaethje got him down. I think I was watching something earlier on there. Where he's, it's only, it's been down twice. Eddie Alvarez got him down, 17 seconds. And there's all this talk of Gaethje being a wrestler. He's not... He is a wrestler, let's say, but it's not something he really uses. And he's never really used since his kind of early amateur days, uh, early pro days, I should say. So it's whether he can stop Khabib taking him down, because I don't think he can stop Khabib taking him down. I just don't think anybody stops Khabib taking him down. If, if, if he wants that takedown, he will get it and he will cuff you, he will pressure you. And he will keep you there longer than 17 seconds. If Justin Gaethje can get up after like can get up after 30 seconds of getting taken down, that's a big win in his part. He's got some weapons there, obviously. If he comes into the fight the way he fought against Tony Ferguson, I think he's in with a great chance because I thought that was an unbelievable uh, performance. The way he broke him down, his leg kicks were massive, his shot selections were massive. Um, you can see the natural power the guy has. But... Then you've got to look at who's across the cage from him. It is, I think, the greatest fighter, pound for pound best fighter in the world. 28 and 0. I mean, there is some question marks, I think, in this this fight because there's a lot of kind of emotions probably coming out of this fight for him because his father passed away. How's he going to take that? BT Sport did an unbelievable promo for UFC 254 unbelievably good promo you should go check that out if you can um i mean habib is just an absolute mauler in there he's he's so fun to watch just with how strong he is how he can like put his pressure onto one leg you can't move he can he do the dagestani handcuff and just beat you up can submit you um but if justin gaethje can come out here and create that chaos um then who knows like uh, to me, uh, I'm 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 picking Khabib for the win, 
but I actually really, really want Justin Gaethje to win just for the story because everybody was kind of writing this guy off when he, he came into the UFC. He's coming from the C League or whatever it may be, and he's turned into just one. I mean, with nine bonuses in seven fights, he's he's an absolute highlight reel. You never have a boring Justin Gaethje fight. Um, but he is against a guy with a stifling game. And I don't think that's going to change any. I've been, Javier Mendes, I've been listening to him. He's like, it's his father's game plan. Now, I know his father's not there, but he's still um, he's still going to fight the same way. He's not going to change anything up. I've seen some of them talking about Michael Chandler. I was actually listening to Khabib before I did this. And Mike, Khabib's like, he's not a championship-level fighter. He will never fight for a championship. So that was interesting, even though he's going to Abu Dhabi. Um, he's been in Abu Dhabi, I think, for a little bit. Has Khabib? He's taking his his camp out there. Islam was obviously supposed to fight that fight. Fell through. Um, I would love to see Justin Gaethje against Mike Chandler. I think that'd be a great fight. Uh, I see TG Kill in there talking about that fight. There, that'd be an awesome fight. Chandler's gonna have some amazing fights, I think, in the UFC. But getting staying in this one here, I I have to kind of side with Khabib. I'm seeing people. I mean. Plus 300 and Justin Gaethje is very enticing because you know the guy's going to fight for your money. Absolutely. It's just, it's against the man in Habib Nurmagomedov who has beat the best guys in the division for the most part. Um, and he's got one of the most kind of stifling games in the UFC, in my opinion, with that with that grappling game. It's crazy how good he is with that. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of looking at maybe over 2.5 in this fight, maybe over 3.5. But I'm going to go with Habib Nurmagomedov via submission. I think he's going to catch a rear naked choke in the late part of this fight. So I'm also going to be looking at Habib in rounds 4, 5 and by decision. I want to see what that's going to be paying. Um, there was a fun start I seen earlier on. I can't remember who, who it was I was watching. was talking about, like... Um, I think it was MMA lock of the night actually he mentioned like most of Habib's takedowns come in the first three rounds and then kind of he goes three for 11 I think it is as he goes into rounds four and five by decision but most of his fights usually kind of finish before round four anyway so uh, I would not be surprised if this fight didn't happen Jamie don't say that uh, we don't need that uh, on a Monday um, this fight needs to happen um but at least they've got a backup if something doesn't go on here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to pick Habib Nurmagomedov. I'm going to pick him via submission in rounds four or five um, in this one here. I was contemplating whether initially I thought maybe take Gaethje. And I was just like, you cannot go against, in my opinion, I cannot go against Habib Nurmagomedov. I just think he's he's too good. I think he will want this win more than anything with the passing of his father. Um, but... It, could it affect him in a negative way? Possibly, but I think his mind and his mental is, is bulletproof. Um, and then we see where he goes from there. I think you, you try and make that Tony Ferguson fight because, I mean, he wants to fight the best guys that have been in, a, in his um, kind of era, you could say there. So if Tony Ferguson was to get a win, you maybe you can maybe make that one up. But who knows? Um, but, like, Justin Gage is a wild man. I, I love listening to the guy talk, even though he's... Um, a little bit crazy <laughs> I, I I love listening to the guy talk and I just think he's an absolute revelation he's been a revelation since he's come to the UFC and, I mean he, another thing that I might mention there it's just the change up in his game you've seen that noticeable change up since the, the Pori fight where I think Whitman's told him like, you need to kind of rein it in a little bit listen to me take your time in some spots and just kind of pick your shots better. and he's changed himself as a fighter from the early UFC days where he came in and he just really blitzed people and looked to get them out through there, and there was no uh, kind of real game plan there, you know what it is, but now you have to kind of really be careful with what you do with Gaethje, and if you stand there with this guy, you're in deep, deep shit, so uh, I'm going to pick Habib Nurmagomedov, I just think, I think he's going to move to 29 and 0 here, I think that Gaethje initially will start to, um, and even he said like he, he tires out the most when he's grappling, and if you're grappling with a guy who's on your back like Habib, it's going to take a lot out of you and I think Khabib can, can go and go and go in this spot here. So I've got Habib Namagamedov via submission rounds 4 and 5. So guys, that's my picks for UFC 254. I've got a few dogs in there, which I'm going to look at betting. I've got Volkov, I think I might, I will go. It kind of reminds me of the Jessica Andrade from last week. I felt like I should have been on her heavy and, and missed that boat big time there. So I think that Volkov's kind of that spot this week where I want to 
maybe take advantage of that there and try and get a prof out of it. So um, I thank all you guys there that are in the, the chat there. It's been popping in here. I've been seeing guys going back and forward, being respectful to one another. And that's what I like to see because um, not everybody's going to agree with me. I'm not going to agree with a lot of other people, but at the end of the day, it's just predictions. Um, take it with a pinch of salt. I appreciate all the support. Like I say, at the start of this, I was asking for 254 likes. I've already got 40 likes, so we've made a great start there. Much, much appreciate. I'm trying to get 25 subs for this video, so I'm already at 3900. 3925 is um, the kind of goal for this week. I think it's a tough one, but I think hopefully I can hit it. Uh, it'd be awesome if we could. 254 is a big one for me because, like I said, I don't think I've ever had over 200 likes. 198, I was like looking at it last week, I was like, come on hit the 200 and never get there, but I um, appreciate all the support, guys. You, you know um, how much it kind of means to me to have you on my channel week in and week out, um, and just respect for everybody um, that kind of sits here and watches me ramble on for 40-odd minutes. So until next week, guys, where are we next week, actually? We're back in um, America, I'm guessing. What is the main event next week? I've totally forgot about that. Oh, Uriah Hall against Anderson Silva next week so i'm looking kind of forward to some of the fights near bryce mitchell against andre feely great fight bobby green's fight again holland against Mardo, uh, maradov great fight so guys until next week um thank you very much up to 46 likes all the very very best appreciate that and remember this fight card starts early on saturday so don't miss out um and just yeah don't miss out see you next week peace